welcome back, Two Day Crew, to Two Day Pass. And we're back to work! Woo! First mock test. Yay! So we got Rania here. Rania, can you fill us in with the background to your driving? Uh, so I started driving summer last year. Okay. Um, but because of COVID and all the restrictions, it's been learning to drive, stopping, learning to drive, stopping, so. Really frustrating, huh? Yeah. So you have or haven't managed to get a test booked yet? I do have a test. You do have a test book. Okay. okay, we don't need to say when it is or where it is, but you've got a test, that's good. So you want to do a mock test now just to see where you're at. Mm -hmm. And then uh, see if you're ready, I guess, for the real test. Yeah. Uh, before we get started, do you have any questions for me? No. No? All right. Fine. Okay, so for everybody that's watching, all the good marks will be up here in green. All the minor faults will be up here in yellow or amber, depending on whatever you want to call that colour. And finally, any serious faults or major faults will be up here in red. And we're, we're going to have about 50 million. <laughs> no, <laughs> none of those. Okay? No, no, no. All right, Rania. So uh, the way the test works for people that aren't aware, you'll be driving for roughly 40 minutes. You will be asked to do some kind of reverse maneuver at some point, even if that's a forwards bay you still have to reverse out, so you get some reversing in. 20 minutes of independent driving, which can be using sat-navs or following signs. Unfortunately for you, I'm gonna ask you to follow signs, which is more difficult, okay? Um, that's it, really, and obviously you'll show me, tell me questions. So we're gonna get driving now. Usually you start off with your tell me. You're able to tell me, dun dun dun, <laughs> um, how you would check to see if your power steering is working. Um, so you switch on the engine, mm -hmm. and if you move it side to side, it should um, it shouldn't feel tough or resist. Perfect, excellent answer. Okay, unless you have any questions for me, we're going to get started now. So when you're ready, I'd like you to drive on, please. Okay. So off to a good start here. Really nice to see Rania doing lots of observations, checking her most dangerous blind spot before setting off. So obviously, if people are used to my channel in the past, they used to talk a lot, but we're gonna really do the formal lock tests on the channel now. That seems to be what everybody wants. So I'm gonna be silent, but you will have my voiceover telling you about all the good points, minor points, and major points along the way. Hopefully that will give you knowledge so that you guys can pass your test first time. Lovely. Okay, Rania, I'd like you to pull over and stop on the yellow zigzag lines on the left, please. Move up to your about a car length from this vehicle that's stopped on the left. So come in and stop somewhere next to the fence and allow at least a car length. So keep moving up until you're about a car length away. Yeah, this is fine. Anywhere here will do. Thank you very much and drive on when you're ready. Lovely. So, if you weren't doing a mock test today, Rania, what would you normally be doing? Working. <laughs> now, the only reason why I mention that is because the examiners at some point on the test usually ask that question just to break the silence. Mm -hmm. Nice that you gave a very short, sweet answer. <laughs> you know, quite polite, but not distracting yourself at the same time. I'm going to turn a little bit of air conditioning on. Just let me know if you get too hot or cold, okay? Thank you. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn left, please. 
it's quite common to have a very busy junction close to the driving test center. When you're on a driving test, you may be a bit anxious, but make sure you assess when it's safe to drive out correctly. The best method is the walkout rule. That means if you would walk out into the road, it's safe enough to drive out. Use this to help you oh. on your driving test. It's falling back a bit. We are at a junction. Sometimes you might be waiting at a traffic light. Use this to your advantage and scan the road ahead effectively. We're at a high street. There may be concealed entrances to car parks. Have a look on the opposite side of the road. Do you see the white van emerging out? We need to take extra caution for this reason. So long since I've been in this car, I've forgotten how to use the switches. Now, if that happens, because later, this is good advice for viewers and for yourself, okay? It's not going to help you with your mock test, really, but it's good to know. If you don't know where the buttons and switches are, you've never driven this car before. This uh -huh. is the first time Ronnie has been in the car, so you wouldn't really have that privilege of using the buttons before. You're allowed to pull over on the left and actually look at the buttons so that you know uh -huh. and then later the examiner will ask you again as you're driving. Okay. So when we get to the part of the test where I'm going to ask you to do the show me question, uh -huh. that's how we're going to do it. Okay. I'll get you to pull over, you'll have a look at the button and then we'll move on and ask you again while you're driving. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's later. Okay, Rania, I'd like to find a safe place to pull up on the left, please. When pulling over to the left, look out for lampposts and trees as you usually have raised curbs next to these landmarks. It can be a good way of identifying a spot from a distance to pull up on the left. Right, fantastic. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start your independent drive. We'll be following signs towards right slip, please. Okay. Now, to let you know, the first sign you'll have is towards the end of this road. Mm -hmm. So it's still quite far ahead. And it will show you two junctions on one sign. Okay. So it's a double roundabout system. The sign for right slip will be there. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, you're allowed to ask your examiner, or me in this case, and we will help you if we can with directions. Okay. Otherwise, drive on and follow the signs to right slip, please. Okay. okay, when you're ready. Reading signs on an independent drive can be tricky. The best way of giving you more chance to read and follow the directions correctly is to decrease your speed slightly. When looking at the sign, look for one second only. We call this a glance. You may have many glances to try and see the directions, but any prolonged looks may lead to you losing control of the vehicle. What I say to my students is, two seconds is too long. Notice how long Rania starts to look at the sign. She loses control of the vehicle, veers in towards the curb where I need to intervene to avoid an accident. And this is a major dangerous driver fault. Time, please. I'm going to have to 
take the left because I'm in the left lane. Okay. Sorry, I, I focused on the sign for too long and I wasn't paying attention to the road, which is really bad. Okay, so we've gone a slightly different direction. You're obviously aware of that because you mentioned you're in the left lane. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. I'm going to give you directions now. So okay. don't worry about looking for signs anymore. I'll give you directions. This is quite common to happen on tests. It's good that you knew that you were in a left only lane. So well done. Okay, at the roundabout, I'd like you to turn right. Second exit. What's quite nice to observe is that Rania seems to be very positive. She knows what's happened and understood and learnt from that, which is excellent. She's regained her focus now and you can see she's really progressing with the road and focusing what's happening in front of her now rather than what happened earlier on. you to take just kind of where this construction is I think there's a road coming up just after it on the left uh -huh. so it'd be the next road on the left please just here thank you very much And if you can find a convenient place somewhere down this road to pull up on the left, okay? It doesn't have to be immediate. Anywhere along the road, if you find a convenient place, just pull up on the left. we're going to do, um, because there aren't any signs here, we're going to go a little bit old school. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a set of directions to remember. Okay. And remember, at any point, if you're not sure, ask me in a safe, convenient place. Mm -hmm. Ask your examiner in a safe, convenient place for directions, and we will help you. Okay. Why I say in a safe, convenient place is because if people do ask, this isn't really so much for you, although it might help you, it's for everybody that's watching. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a junction, that wouldn't be a safe or convenient place to ask the examiner, so they wouldn't give you directions. But if we ask, you see the next road here on the left, mm -hmm. we got about maybe 10 car lengths from there, something like that. The examiners might help you out from this distance. Okay. But in that junction, mm -mm can't help you not safe all right okay so I'd like to remember these sets of direction at the end of the road turn left mm -hmm. at the end of the next road turn left and then take the first road on the right so end of the road left end of the road left mm -hmm. then immediately right it's the first road on the right the reason why I say immediately right if you have a look here left end of the road left immediately right okay you see that yeah all right i'm helping her out too much aren't i <laughs> all right okay when you're ready and it's safe do your best to follow those directions and drive on please
my legs are getting a bit cramped so I'm gonna stretch but don't panic sometimes people see my legs move and they hit the brakes so I'm just stretching my legs okay. Okay? Rania still has two different directions to complete at the end of the road turn left and then take the immediate road on the right the junction at the end of this road is a staggered crossroads and we have road markings in the center of the main road showing us where we need to position our vehicle in case we have to stop and wait before turning right. Rani does an excellent job at her positioning here, stopping in the road markings and not obstructing the traffic behind her allowing the traffic on the main road to keep flowing freely. Excellent positioning, now waiting for a safe opportunity and no oncoming traffic to complete her turn. All right, thank you very much. Okay, Rania, that is the end of your independent driving. Follow the road ahead and I will give you directions from now on. Okay. It really feels like Rani has taken in all the conditions she can see in front. She's noticed the oncoming vehicle and the construction site here. She's checking mirrors for change of direction and adjusting the speed of her vehicle to the width and the risk of hazards like workers stepping out in the road. Looking under, over or around vehicles can give you an advantage in case of pedestrians. Looking here, we have a sharp bend. Notice the decrease in speed to gain control in the vehicle and Rania does an excellent job of maintaining her side of the road. It would be dangerous to drift out into the oncoming lane. At the end of the road, I'd like you to turn Sorry, at the end of the road, I'd like you to turn right, please, right. And then again at the end of this road, I'd like you to turn right, please. Keep your foot on the brake, mm -hmm. squeeze it, squeeze, mm -hmm. let go. See that? Yeah. Put your foot to the gas. Mm -hmm. When you're ready, you push the gas, the car will move. It will not roll back. You can do the hold again if you want, or you can just do as you normally do. It's up to okay. you. Yeah. Normally this car wouldn't really roll back, but on occasions you felt it slightly today. Yeah. So I was just showing you the technology on this vehicle, that's all. Okay. Well, whatever's um, comfortable for you. Um, if I was to roll back in the, in the test, is yep. that a, maj a major fault, or does that go down as a minor? Um, or does it depend? <clears throat> yes, from my experience, and I can only share my experience, mm -hmm. it depends on the examiner. Okay. So I've had one student roll back about three meters on their test and passed, mm -hmm. and I had another student exactly at that junction you were just at, mm -hmm. roll back that much, like yeah. you did earlier, yeah. and fail. Okay. So it depends on the examiner. Now the best way of protecting yourself is do not roll back. Yeah. Then it doesn't matter if you get this or this, you're mm -hmm. going to be safe. Okay, hope that helps. For anybody that's driving a manual car and is new to the channel, you probably don't want to subscribe to my channel. But if you are in a manual car, my suggestion is to use the handbrake, find your biting point, set your gas, and then release the handbrake. That's an uphill start. 
that way you will go forwards rather than rolling backwards. Okay, right, Rania, I'm gonna give you two sets of directions. Okay, you're gonna have a double roundabout system again. <laughs> so at the first roundabout, turn right, and at the second roundabout, turn left. So just to repeat the directions, first roundabout, turn right, second roundabout, turn left. And just continue to follow this lane ahead. And just keep going straight. Lovely, thank you very much. So what we're on our way now to do is your maneuver. You're more than halfway through the test now, I would say. And we've also got your show me question to do. So we'll cover those two. Okay, um, this actually might be a show me question that you already know. Uh -huh. So we can give this one a go. We might not need to pull up for this one. I'd like you to show me, or usually examiners start with when it's safe, but it's gonna be safe at any point now. So I'm just gonna say, I'd like you to show me how you would beep the horn, please. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. That completes our show me, tell me questions. Well done. Okay, there's a sign, it's a little bit hidden in the trees, but still quite visible. Um, it's a roundabout coming up. I'd just like you to go straight ahead for me, please. It's the first exit following the road ahead. This roundabout is open. That means that we have good visibility. Notice how early on we can see the traffic to the right, and we know that we're going to have to come to a stop. Rania's awareness and planning helps her and she used the benefit of an automatic transition here to add some extra gas and move off like all the other road users around her. Really nice to see this confident driving and if you're worried about stalling why not swap to automatic as 56% of all vehicles in the UK are now automatic transitions. On this high street, Rani will have to deal with parked vehicles, pedestrians walking out across the road, and emerging traffic. There's quite a lot to take in. Reduce your speed and make sure that you always plan for the hazard that's closest to you first.
good. The pump's all right then. Okay, not much traffic there. Okay, we're going to have a roundabout coming up just after this hill. At the roundabout, I'd like you to turn right, third exit, going into what says Superstore on the sign, please. Third exit. Correct. Two. Lovely. Now it's a little bit hard to see, but we're following the road. So just keep going around and to this side on the on the right. Thank you. And we're gonna keep going all the way down towards the end if it's safe. Once you reach the end, turn right. So here, Rania needs to observe to the left. Look as I observe multiple times and check to see if she's watching. I did not see her look at all. I did give discretion That's on this occasion. Mm -hmm. However, this could be a serious fault for observations at the pedestrian crossing. Again, just follow the road all the way down to the end. Okay, and slow down and stop somewhere here for me, please. Thank you, that's fine. Right, what we're gonna do is a forwards bay park. Now, I was a little bit lazy, I didn't really give you the instructions back here, so I got you to stop here to tell you we're gonna do a forwards bay park. Okay. Normally, you kind of got that explanation on the move. Yeah, uh, we're going to go over to this next aisle. So I'm going to give you directions. Once we go around, like a U-turn, there's lots of spaces over here. Again, when we get there, I'll give you directions to get there. I'll give you the information to do a bay park. Okay. Uh, if you could do me a quick favor. Um, one of the cameras just fell down. Uh, let's get into the bay first and then I can put it back up. All right, so what I'd like to do is just kind of come round to the right here for me, please. So just turning right. And then nice and slow, turn right again, following the blue car here, please. Lovely. And then if you just choose any bay and drive forwards into any bay, please. For a forwards bay park, it's beneficial to use the bays on the right hand side as you have more distance for you to position the vehicle into the bay. Rania seems to be using the white line on the bay lined up on her reference point alongside her driver window sill ledge. However, because this is a new vehicle, that doesn't seem to have worked out correctly. Sure. You're allowed to make a alteration to your position, we call this a correction, by reversing back out and then repositioning your car and moving forwards again. Remember to do plenty of observations, which Rania clearly is doing. However, this will be a minor fault for control on your maneuver for your driving test. I'm not sure I put 100% in. So you have to make your own adjustments and assessments, yeah? So you tell me when you're finished. Maybe I can make a tiny bit more forward. I think I'm 
<laughs> okay, lovely. All right, now I'm just going to walk around the vehicle. Uh, would you switch the engine off for me? Mm -hmm. Just for extra safety. If you want to walk out, you can walk out as well. I'm just going to walk around the vehicle. Okay, thank you very much, Rania. And when you're ready, start the engine again for me, please. Take your time. I'd like you to reverse out to the right, please. Is this the way that you intend? Um, Towards the right? Or am I going the wrong reverse way? Reverse out to the right. It's fine, just keep doing what you're doing. I'll, pull, I'll go forward and we go We can go both way. ways, it's entirely up to you. Whatever's, you sure? e whatever's easiest and safest for you, I don't mind. And then if you turn left for me, please. It's slightly easier to go out this way, in fact. Don't worry too much about these lines okay. here. Do your best, but you can go over them slightly because it's safe and it's necessary. If we didn't, we would end up over there in the fence. Okay, so the same way we came in, we're just gonna go back out. So just where the red pavement is on the left, turn left and that will exit the car park. Now this is a car park you may be asked to go into, mm -hmm. um, so that's why we came here, because you can do exactly the same on your test. When you reach the roundabout, which is just coming up on the left, turn left, first exit, please. Okay, uh, I'd like you to go straight ahead at the roundabout, second exit please. Okay, we're almost back at the test centre now. There is a traffic light coming up. I'd like you to follow the road ahead at the traffic light. Then we're going to come towards two mini roundabouts. First roundabout straight, second roundabout left. I wish I stayed in the right lane now. Is there any reason why you're saying that? Because there's part of the cars. Good, nice forward planning, well done. Sorry, can you give me the directions? Yeah, so straight ahead at this roundabout, left at the second. Thank you. 
I'd like you to take the next road on the right. Take the next road on the left, please. Here Rania is driving too far from the parked vehicles into the potential oncoming traffic. If it's not necessary, then we must keep one meter from the parked cars, or what's also referred to as a door whip. Okay, so, so this is an interesting part to come up. So what I'd like you to do is just slowly come to a stop. All right, what I'm gonna do is what an examiner would do, and they're gonna kind of give you more information because of something like this. Could be an accident, roadworks, there's not a lot of room. In fact, I don't think there's enough room for us to get through there, okay? Mm -hmm. So, in fact, what I'm gonna get you to do is just pull over and stop on the left today, okay? Because that looks like a horrible situation. The exam test center's behind us. We were gonna finish around here anyways, mm -hmm. so it's not gonna make a big difference. So if you just mind pulling us up, don't worry about the driveways. Okay. Just pull up somewhere on the left, anywhere will do, okay? okay? Yeah, if you just edge us and swear about the car behind us, just edge us forwards. This should be perfect. And just stop us here. It's fine. All right, relax. Switch off the engine. That is the end of your exam. How did you feel that went? Not great. <laughs> okay. Why? Because I messed up really bad. Because mm. I paid too much attention to the sign and not the road, and I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Um, you did need to give attention to the sign. Mm -hmm. So thinking back, because you're correct, um, thinking back on that, is there any way you'd deal with that situation slightly differently if it came up again? Maybe go a little bit slower as the sign approaches. Good so advice. it gives me a couple more seconds to look at it. Yeah, and you could even look at it a little bit longer. I wouldn't normally say something like that, but if you're going slower, yeah. It gives you that adjustment so you can look a little bit if you feel you need to. But uh, you've got very good information there. So unfortunately on this occasion, as Rania just mentioned, that was it. That was the only serious fault you got. <laughs> um, your driving's very good. You did receive uh, one, two, three, four minor faults, which is very low. Mm -hmm. Okay. The average is around seven. Okay. Uh, but you got the one serious fault, major fault, which was the clearance. So at the point where I touched the wheel, we were going in towards the pavement. So I had to yeah. take control to prevent the car from hitting the pavement. Okay, but the minor faults, so we're gonna go in order. Uh, the first one would have been uh, your use of speed. So you turned onto a new road, turning left. Mm -hmm. It was good. You went at the right opportunity. As you join the new road, new road, new mirrors. This will help you to see if there's anyone overtaking or following too closely. And then you'll know whether you need to build your speed or not. We didn't really build our speed too much. I think it was a white vehicle behind us. So that vehicle had to slow down gently. Had it I had to slow down a lot more. I don't think you would have drove out of the junction. You would have seen it. When you went, there was no one there. So you went, because that's a safe opportunity. Unfortunately, as we're going, someone comes along, nothing you can do about it, really. Complete the turn, but then when you feel it's safe, use of speed, adjust the speed, build the speed. I'm not too sure if you're aware too much of that vehicle following. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was the reason why we didn't adjust the speed enough. Okay, so okay. just slowed that vehicle down a little bit. Mine enough for that occasion, okay? Uh, the next one was a pedestrian crossing. So as we've gone into the superstore, mm -hmm. there's a pedestrian crossing exactly where the entrance of the superstore is. Mm -hmm. I really didn't see you look left. And that left side, when you look back at this video, there's a huge fence there where they store gardening goods or whatever they're storing outside the actual entrance, mm -hmm. which blocks your vision 
from any pedestrians which may be behind that obstruction and it only takes two steps for them to come out to be on the crossing. Okay. So there's not good observation um, visibility here, mm -hmm. so we need more observations really. And I was just watching to see if you were looking, I didn't really pick it up. So looking back at the video, you'll probably see the same thing. Okay. No one was there. So yeah, but they could be. They could be, yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, that same zebra crossing uh, on the way back out. I just wanted to see more observations at the crossings as well. I didn't mark it because I wasn't too sure. So myself, I'd look back at that. But definitely that one we talked about, want to see more observations to the left side. And like I mentioned on the video, you can go there on your driving test. Okay. So it's not just a freak weird thing that is something that's almost certain to happen okay. if you go there. Okay, uh, the last one uh, I believe that was the last one. So, use of speed, we talked about observations at Zebra Crossing. Uh, in fact, there's two more, isn't there? So, uh, we did our bay park. Well done. Good bay parking. You get a minor fault for having to adjust. Not the end of the world. Do it because you need to. If you didn't do it, you'd fail, wouldn't you? Because you would have been out of the line. Yeah. So, good job. Well done. Just to point out that you'd receive a minor fault for it. Not a big deal. Okay, the last one there is clearance. So, yes, you've got one serious for being too close. But this road here, as you're driving down the road, no oncoming traffic. Good visibility. You can see the road all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. We're driving now almost into the oncoming lane doesn't okay. mean that we're doing anything dangerous because we can see there's no one there mm -hmm. but do we need to be there that's what the examiners are looking at so okay. is there a need for it yeah um, because we don't need to be there it would definitely be marked down um, the clearance so we want to keep how far from the parked cars do you a remember door length or a meter, yeah really good so we just went probably two meters or, or a bit more or something like that we were going quite far out mm -hmm. marked it as a minor like the pedestrian crossing no one was there no one was there but had there been on coming I don't think you would have done it because from what I've seen your driving's very good you'd see a car you would close the gap mm -hmm. so it's when no one's around usually I'm guilty of this a lot of people are it's Christmas Day as an example, no one's there. We might drive on the opposite side of the road if we're not paying attention because no one's there. Yeah. All right, so that's the end. Before this lorry decides to come and crash into us, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the channel, Rania. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.